You know, honestly speaking, I'm not surprised by Mitch McConnell's gaffe or slip up. But we're going to show you right now what I'm talking about. Just give me a moment to pull this nonsense up. And it's not that I even want to continuously relive racism or highlight racism constantly. It's just that being a black person, it's a part of my life whether I want it to be or not. And unfortunately for me, you know, I have to navigate a world that treats me different based on something I have absolutely no control over. And I'm trying to see if I can even find it, because honestly speaking, the whole McConnell thing pissed me off as it was, and I don't think I liked the post that showed it, honestly, because how do you even hit a like on a Senate leader, former Senate majority leader, calling your people? Yeah, there we go. I found it. Let's transition over so that you can see what I'm talking about. Let me learn how to work this thing. What's your message for voters of color who are concerned that without the John L. Lewis Voting Rights Act, they're not going to be able to vote in the midterm? Well, the concern is misplaced because if you look at the statistics, African American voters are voting in just as high a percentage as Americans. It's not really a quiet part for those of us who live with racism. I'm going to just say that right now because a lot of people love saying that, oh, they're saying the quiet parts out loud and it's often... The people who aren't targets of racism that love to use that tired trope. It ha it's quiet to you because you're probably the one trying to be on the down low about it, honestly speaking. Racism is a big part of many of our lives, whether we are the victims of it or you are the aggressor or the enabler of it. And unfortunately, the enablers don't want to admit to their part. The aggressors want to act like they're the victims of being called out for their racism. And those of us who are victims of it are just trying to freaking survive in this world that doesn't make sense. But to address what Mitch McConnell said, because they are targeting black voters. They don't want us turning out to vote because they know when we vote, Dems tend to win. When we turn out, they tend to lose their positions in power. So they're attacking the voter right bill and anything that tries to protect or secure voting rights for every American. He wants to speak to the base Republican Party who last year pretty much stormed our Capitol for their orange messiah, wore Holocaust pro shirts, pro Holocaust shirts, literally. It's on stream. I don't have to be hyperbolic about it. Literal pro Auschwitz shirts because these are the type of people they've always been. So when you tell me somebody like Sith Lord Mitch McConnell said something racist, I don't know what you were expecting my reaction to be at this point. I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised. I've known this was the Republican Party for the longest time since their martyr Reagan was in power. And calling people who had to have assistance welfare queens. Ignoring the fact that a lot of rural people, a lot of those salt of the earth apple pie type people were on those assistance too and still are in big droves. They have bought into the lie that their lack of pigment makes them better. They have bought into the lie that anybody that looks different is after them. And that's why they need their guns and everything else. They stoke the fears and the ignorance, but it's biting them in the ass currently. Their people are dying in droves from a preventable pandemic. Their people continuously follow a man who had a gold toilet as their messiah. It is not a healthy party. So people giving me sound bites of Mitch McConnell trying to say that black Americans are somehow different from other Americans or the real Americans as his stupid sound bite was alluded to. My roots are deeply planted in this country, whether my ancestors wanted that or not. 
We've been here for generations. I have ancestral ties to indigenous Americans. I have ancestral ties from African Americans who were brought over here, not willingly. My family goes back generations. They've also fought in several wars for this country. Some of you flag waving patriots haven't done anything but play a fucking Call of Duty game. You have cosplay as a soldier with your guns and stuff, and you've never even gone through basic training. You wouldn't even know what an E9 or any of the other classifications are because you fake your way through life and you got some assholes like McConnell telling you that you're patriots. You're not. Real patriots serve the country even when that country hates them. Even when that country, come, you come back from fighting Hitler to a uh, no-colored sign by your water fountain where you go to the movies. You get told that you can't live in certain areas even though you put your life on the line for your country. You get in the business after, like my other grandfather did, and have to deal with all kinds of corruptions, all kinds of, we'll give the contract to the mafia instead. Their construction companies can't be on the, not on the level. It's a mess. And some of these people were old enough to remember when these same people who went to organized crime were viewed as less than, but got to be white and everything turned around in their favor. So I'm telling you this. I'm not shocked that men like McConnell believe that any non-white Americans are different Americans. That's what they've been trained. They want that message to be prevalent. That's why we get attacks on things like CRT, which is still not a curriculum in most schools. But you can't, when you're fed Fox News and other bullshit, random, I'm against the New World Order type podcast, that's all you're going to believe. I'm not here to change a racist mind at all. Honestly speaking, I doubt my content is being ingested by those types. I'm here to talk to yous who try to act like, I don't know what to do about this stuff. Well, the first thing you can do is realize that an American's an American. It doesn't matter what we look like. If we're born here, we're natural Americans. If we pass the citizenship test and have the papers, we're American too. All of you want to have this weird quasi relationship with nationalism that doesn't make sense. Either you're proud to be a part of your country or not. It's just the way it is. Honestly speaking, there are days where I do look back on pride with the amount of sacrifice my grandfathers and even my father until it broke his mind did for this country. But there are more days than not when I see people ingesting pee and cattle dewormer for a preventable pandemic that I wonder why am I still sharing this space with people. So it is a very complex feeling, but I'm not shocked by Mitch McConnell's attitude. It's been prevalent all my life being othered and to have somebody you know, go, oh, he's saying the quiet parts out loud just irks my soul because it was never quiet for those of us who deal with racism. It's always been loud. It's always been in our face. And we've had to struggle through the identity of, yes, I'm an American too. I have to add my ethnicity to it, even though it's pretty clear that I'm black, you know, or African or whatever. But that is the nonsense that we have structurally and socially set up in our country to not only classify, segregate, and separate us, but to continue the infighting. It's lucrative to have us doing this shit. And that's why it's not going to stop. And that's why Twitter is all abuzz with the latest thing that Sith Lord McConnell said. Honestly speaking, I'm just too tired for it. And honestly speaking... It doesn't bother me as much as the people who yell at me that they're on my side as they go and still believe that they can't live in areas with people like me, that they can't be around people like me seriously because we're so different. If you truly believe that all humans are equal, as you say, as you put BLM in your profile in a rainbow banner when you have no association to either of those groups, then you need to understand that you're tokenizing me or treating me as I'm a different person simply because because my skin tone continues that issue.
honestly speaking, it's hard to undo social conditioning of race and racism. It really is. So I applaud people for even trying to take the step. But if you're not ready to confront all the negative aspects that you allow to permeate in your brain, all the beliefs you have about black people and brown people and anybody who doesn't look like you and black people, we have our own stuff to unpack too. It's just, it's harder on us because it can literally kill us to not pay attention to racism. So I guess I'm just doing this bonnet short to say that I'm not shocked by men by like McConnell. I'm just shocked how many men like McConnell still have seats in our Senate. How many women and men like McConnell still have seats in our, our, our House of Representatives. We honestly need to get this rot out of our country. Honestly speaking, they represent a base that's literally taking a cattle deworm of medicine for an illness that we have a proper working vaccine, several proper working vaccines for. So it's like I said, take this as you wish. I'm just tired of people acting like racism has ever been quiet. Because it's often the people who aren't the targets that use that line. It's never been the quiet part. It's always been loud and in my face. I'm going to wrap this up. I'll see you tomorrow for a live version of the Bonnet Chronicles. We are going to talk the broken fourth estate and its value. There's a lot to unpack. I have a lot of receipts to drop about certain journalists and how they've been behaving the last few years and the history of the news. So if that's your jam, you can join me live on Twitch uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If not, it will be uploaded to this YouTube channel later on. But I am going to wrap this up because, honestly speaking... I just hate the constant reminders of my difference and this McConnell clip, just constant reminder of that. And it sucks. See ya.